Today's video, we go through what happened in the last quarter of 2020 and my thoughts as we get into 2021 and beyond. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Joe Masick, Portfolio Manager with IA Private Wealth. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my fourth quarter market commentary. And as you may have noticed, we are sporting a brand new name for my firm, IA Private Wealth, that has been changed from Hollis Wealth. And this was as a result of combining IA Securities and Hollis Wealth into a unified name and brand in IA Private Wealth. So going forward, you will see some of the artwork and intro videos being upgraded to reflect the new name and the new brand for which I'm super excited. And I have just a quick announcement to make. If you are a Canadian investor, you know that the RSP deadline is quickly approaching and all contributions must be made on or before March 1st, 2021. The earned RSP contribution room in the 2020 tax year is 18% of your overall earned income to a maximum of $27,830, whichever you hit first. As well, TFSA contributions have also been added to with an additional $6,000 for 2021 and the lifetime contribution amount if you have never added money to a TFSA assuming that you turned 18 before 2009 is 75,500 and just one more note there is no deadline for the TFSA contribution we just like to make the announcement for TFSAs at the same time as RSPs as it's a new year and before we get into our video I'd like to go through my usual disclaimer which I have put in written form to save time but the long and the short of it is before you make any decisions surrounding your money based on any video you see on YouTube, please take the time to consult with a fully licensed professional or feel free to reach out to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The other thing you need to do is smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm as it really helps out my channel. And if you love my content and want to keep in the loop with all of my newest videos, I would be thrilled if you would just hit that subscribe button and darken that notification bell. So as of this writing, we have just gotten through pretty much the last quarter of 2020 and into the first month of January. I want to go through some of the thoughts that I had in the previous market commentary, which was well received, address which thoughts were correct, which ones had yet to unfold, and the ones that surprised me. I also want to share some of the new ideas as to how 2021 may play out given the new information that we have now, and if any thoughts that I had back then changed since I did my last commentary. And the overall theme is we have moved from a market with a lot of uncertainty into a market that has what I think has a lot more certainty built into it. But we are still not out of the woods yet. In the last quarter, politically speaking, Joe Biden was leading the polls. And while the election was close, I was uncertain as to whom the next head of the administration would be, as I didn't fully trust the polling numbers. It's important to note, though, voter participation was at an all-time high, and Joe Biden did win and was eventually sworn in as president. What made things really interesting this time around was the time delay in the mail in votes. And on election night, I will fully admit, it appeared that Donald Trump had a sizable lead on Joe Biden. But as the mail-in votes were tallied and counted, slowly but surely, a number of red states turned blue, and eventually enough electoral votes were collected to give Joe Biden the victory. Notable states that were flipped were Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Arizona. Of course, I've learned something new as to why the swear-in ceremony takes place in late January, as it leaves time to contest and ensure whomever had the most votes in each state and electoral votes wins the election. As we all know, former President Trump did not concede and instead contested the results with all legal avenues and was in the end unsuccessful in a second term. We also had some runoff elections which were super interesting and determined the House and the Senate. And we now have a thin but notably Democratic majority with a Democratic president for the next four years. Knowing the administration, Senate and House certainly adds to the certainty of the markets and now we can move forward having some sense of what we can expect politically from the United States. Now in my last commentary, I covered the SoftBank story and inadvertently unbeknownst to me, I think we got our very first glimpse of what was happening now with GameStop and how that likely evolved. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time on the GameStop story in this video, as I believe this story deserves its
its own dedicated video to describe in detail what is happening. And I will be walking through the whole thing at a later date. But I do wanna focus on this quote from my last commentary, as I believe we have a further explanation of who possibly the legion of small investors was. And I believe this legion could very well have been Wall Street bets last year. Now this has made huge news over the past little bit, as a group of investors, part of Wall Street bets on Reddit, appeared to band together and found an overshorted stock in GameStop and decided to exploit it at the expense of some large hedge funds. It seemed to work as a few of the hedge funds have lost serious amounts of money, including Andrew Left of Citron, Melvin Capital, and Stephen Cohen's 0.72. In fact, it's estimated that as much as $19 billion has been lost by these large hedge funds as a result of this monumental short squeeze. I believe the hedge funds and the smaller investors, of course, will find an equilibrium and the markets will adjust. As you have already seen in an announcement from Andrew Left from Citron, he is no longer disclosing his short positions to the public after this incident. I also suspect hedge funds will craft new and innovative ways to protect their capital in the future. But the message has been sent from the group of smaller investors and a new risk to short sellers has been exposed. In the future, I will do an entire video on the workings of Robinhood, GameStop, short positions, and what happened and possible legal implications as I believe a video should be dedicated to understanding all of the ins and outs with respect to this crazy occurrence. With all that said, what is happening with these short squeeze companies is risky, unprecedented, and has potential legal liability and potentially could leave you holding the bag, so to speak. So full disclosure, I'm certainly not getting involved with a buy or sell in my portfolios, and I think it could be wise for you as a potential investor not to get involved as well. It's likely that this does not end well for more than a few investors and the potential for loss on this strategy is large, so you have to be careful. Okay, moving right along. As to how the illness has and likely will play out, the double danger of the flu and the illness that I talked about in the last commentary was a non-factor as it appears social distancing, mask wearing, and increased awareness of the illness essentially crushed flu transmission. However, a second heavier wave of the illness wound up happening, causing widespread shutdowns and further economic damage damage, and worst of all, lives being lost. The fact that the flu transmission is essentially non-existent could go to show everyone just how contagious this new illness is vis-a-vis -vis other seasonal flus that have been around a long time and had a tough time spreading during the same time as this new illness. The good news is that at least two new vaccines have been approved for emergency use since my last commentary, and the vaccination program is now well underway. As well, it also seems trust for the new vaccines has gone up as more and more people People become comfortable seeing other people receive their vaccination shot. With that said, the new variants of the illness coming out of South Africa and the UK definitely add a measure of uncertainty as it's believed at this moment that the mortality rates could be higher and the new variants are more efficient at transmission, being up to 50 to 70 percent more contagious. With all that said, there is more good news as that they also believe that the vaccines are still effective against these new variants, they just have to be able to ramp up production. And and be able to deliver these vaccines, which has been an issue. So as I said before, and I say it now again, I believe it will take time to be able to vaccinate enough people worldwide, quell the illness enough for us to get back to a new normal. And I would suggest that we are looking at the latter half of 2021 before this happens. I also believe more vaccines will be approved, manufactured, and distributed so we can finally move past this illness. This again adds tremendous amount of certainty with respect to the markets and the economy going forward, as compared with the fall of last year when we had nothing certain. I would say the rollout and the manufacture still presents some issues. However, those issues are more easily solved than creating a vaccine in the first place. The other major issue is what if a variant develops that the vaccines are ineffective against? Could this serve as another risk to the markets as this year plays out? The final quarter of the year saw the markets move strongly upward with the exception of the last week of January and the markets have proven most resilient in the face of the increasing risks to the economy. However, the return to choppiness is consistent with our thoughts that it will take some time for this tug of war to be complete. And we saw some evidence of this in late January, 2021, as the last week saw a bit of a sell-off. The overvaluation of the market was and still is a concern as the economy is still under pressure and the markets are still very overvalued. However, there
there is a good chance we can continue to have even richer valuations as more fiscal stimulus was approved and continues to be added. I believe more fiscal stimulus checks to Americans' bank accounts are on the way as long as it's necessary to ensure that we come out of the recession the best we can. With that said, we need to keep an eye on the ever-growing asset balance sheet of the Federal Reserve as we are now well over $7 trillion and increasing every month. One question I've had on my mind is what happens when the stimulus stops and the Federal Reserve and the government attempt to have the market and the economy survive without stimulus? Will we have a repeat of the taper tantrum that we saw in 2013 or will we continue to gain in the markets? These are questions that are on my mind as we approach a healing of the economy and we will be watching for these developments very closely. On another note, the yield curve seems to be nicely steepening and is currently normal, which would suggest that the liquidity added to the market seems to be sufficient and is suggesting that the markets would be able to withstand potential black swan events as they may arise. This is not at all to suggest that we could not see a meaningful decline and a correction of anywhere between 15 to 20%. But with the added stimulus, it's hard to make a case for, but not impossible to see, an absolute collapse to happen. In our portfolios, we continue to have a sizable equity position, but also maintain cash positions as well as some fixed income and market neutral exposures as a precaution to minimize our volatility risks in the short term while still having the ability to add to our position in equities should we get a sizable correction in the markets over the next few quarters. We also anticipate the markets being good, but choppy over the shorter term prior to another long expansion. So with all that said, I want to at this time thank you for tuning in to Investing Made Simple. And if you like the content, again, please hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm as it really helps out my channel. And if you love my content and want to be kept in the loop with all of my newest videos, I would be very happy if you just hit that subscribe button and darken that notification bell. Until next time, this is Joe Masick, Portfolio Manager. We'll see you soon.